Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're looking for some hidden gems in the sci-fi genre, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the most underrated sci-fi films that you should watch at least once. These are films that may have been overlooked or underrated when they were released. Some suffer from bad timing or marketing. Others are simply too innovative for audiences to fully grasp at the time of their release. But they have something special and creative to offer the genre. Whether it's a clever plot twist, a stunning visual style, a thought-provoking premise, or a memorable performance, these films will surprise and delight you. But which one do you think is the most underrated? Let me know in the comments and let's get started. James Cameron is a master of blockbuster cinema with hits like the Terminator series, Titanic, and Avatar under his belt. But there is one of his most ambitious and overlooked projects, the 1989 sci-fi adventure The Abyss. It tells the story of a team of scientists sent to investigate a sunken nuclear submarine at the bottom of the ocean. There they encounter a hostile environment, a mysterious force, and a possible encounter with aliens. The film was a passion project for Cameron, who was fascinated by the underwater world and wanted to push the boundaries of filmmaking technology. He designed a complex system of underwater cameras, lighting, and sets to create a realistic and immersive experience for the audience. The production was plagued by delays, accidents, and budget overruns. It cost $43 million to make, but grossed only $54 million in the U.S. He also demanded a lot from his actors, who had to endure long hours in a giant water tank, wearing heavy diving suits and breathing apparatus. Ed Harris and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio nearly died during filming and have since refused to speak publicly about the movie. Critics praised the visual effects and stunning underwater scenes, but criticized the film for being overlong and implausible, with a ridiculous finale. It was also poorly timed. Two other films with similar themes had bombed earlier that year, so audiences lost interest in another underwater thriller. The Abyss remains one of Cameron's most underrated films, though it shows his visionary talent and ability to create exciting and emotional stories. A year before, The Matrix blew everyone away with its sci-fi twist on reality. Another film explored similar concepts with a noir aesthetic and a mind-bending plot. Dark City is a cult classic that deserves greater recognition for its originality and creativity. Dark City follows the story of John Murdoch, who wakes up in a strange hotel room with no memory and a murder scene. He soon realizes that he lives in a city that is constantly being manipulated by mysterious entities that can alter people's memories and identities. He must find out who he is and what is going on before they catch him. Dark City pays homage to many cinematic influences, from the expressionist masterpiece Metropolis to the cyberpunk anime Akira to the neo-noir Blade Runner. Some critics dismissed it as derivative, while others hailed it as a masterpiece and a triumph. The movie was not well received by test audiences, who found it confusing and dark. In addition, and worst of all, the studio decided to cut some scenes and add a voiceover narration that revealed the main twist in the first minutes. Proyas was unhappy with this decision and felt that the film was lost in the marketing process. The film had a budget of $27 million, but only made $5 million in its opening weekend. Dark City is a film that deserves to be rediscovered and appreciated for its artistic vision and philosophical questions. The film uses its production design and cinematography to create a unique and compelling world that reflects its themes of identity, memory, and reality. The film also has a surprising twist that reveals the true nature of the city and its inhabitants. The film explores what makes us human and what defines our reality in a way that is both thrilling and thought-provoking. Event Horizon was a flop when it was released in 1997. Critics panned it as a mess of a movie that was too violent, too confusing, and too derivative. Set in the year 2047, the movie follows a crew of astronauts sent to find out what happened to a spaceship called the Event Horizon, which disappeared into a black hole seven years earlier. When they arrive at the ship, they find it deserted, but as they explore its dark and twisted interior, they discover they are not alone. The film had a troubled production from the start. When Titanic was delayed, Paramount gave director Paul W.S. Anderson in a hefty $60 million budget and unprecedented creative control, urging him to quickly bring his vision to life. With a penchant for horror, Anderson set out to create a chilling sci-fi tale inspired more by the psychological terror of The Shining than the cerebral journey of 2001. However, the first cut of the film, which veered into gruesome and disturbing territory, was met with vehement disapproval from test audiences. Recognizing the need for significant changes, Anderson was forced to cut numerous scenes and tone down the explicit violence that had initially shocked viewers. This process undoubtedly left the final version of Event Horizon a far cry from his original vision. Unfortunately, when the movie finally emerged in its revised form, it failed to resonate with audiences and critics alike. 
The visceral violence, which had been toned down, still left a lasting impression and contributed to the negative reception. As fate would have it, Event Horizon plummeted at the box office, grossing only $26 million. This significant financial loss dealt a devastating blow to Paramount, adding to the disappointment surrounding the ill-fated project. But in the years since its release, Event Horizon has gained a cult following. Even its tonal shift from sci-fi mystery to horror nightmare is praised, with the third act being one of the most terrifying and shocking depictions of hell ever shown on screen. John Carter is one of the most infamous box office bombs in history. It was supposed to launch a new blockbuster franchise for Disney, but instead it became a huge financial disaster. The movie follows a Civil War soldier who is transported to the Red Planet, where he becomes involved in a war between different alien races. The movie was directed by Andrew Stanton, who had previously made such hits as Finding Nemo and WALL-E for Pixar. The movie had a rich and imaginative world, full of strange and wonderful creatures. Disney invested about $350 million in the movie, hoping to recoup their investment with a massive box office hit. But the movie needed to make at least $600 million to break even, and it fell far short of that goal. It resulted in a $200 million loss for Disney, which led them to buy Lucasfilm a year later and focus on more reliable franchises like Marvel and Star Wars. John Carter may be known as the biggest flop of all time, but it was not as bad as its reputation suggests. Critics loved its original world-building and stunning visual effects. Ironically, the source material, the Edgar Rice Burroughs series, may have hurt John Carter's chances of success. Both George Lucas and James Cameron have cited Burroughs' stories as inspiration for Star Wars and Avatar, respectively. And by the time John Carter finally made it to the big screen, everyone already knew the exact same plot. One of the most ambitious and daring sequels ever made, Blade Runner 2049 is a stunning achievement that honors and extends the legacy of Ridley Scott's 1982 sci-fi classic Blade Runner. Set 30 years after the original film, Blade Runner 2049 follows K a replicant Blade Runner who hunts down and retires rogue replicants. His life changes when he stumbles upon a shocking discovery, the remains of a female replicant who died while giving birth. This revelation threatens to upset the fragile balance between humans and replicants, sending Kay on a quest to find the missing child and the truth about his own identity. 2049 is a visual masterpiece that immerses the viewer in a dystopian future that feels both familiar and alien. The film's cinematography, production design, and special effects are stunning, creating a rich and detailed world full of mystery and wonder. The film's score, composed by Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Walfish, is haunting and atmospheric, echoing the iconic music of Vangelis from the original film. Despite its critical acclaim and loyal fan base, Blade Runner 2049 was a box office disappointment, grossing only $240 million worldwide against a budget of $155 million. The film's failure can be attributed to several factors, including its lengthy running time, its R rating, its complex and cerebral plot requiring familiarity with the original film, and its lack of mainstream stars aside from Ford. However, these factors also make the movie a rare and remarkable work of art. Blade Runner is not a conventional blockbuster that panders to the lowest common denominator. It is a visionary and intelligent sci-fi epic that explores profound themes of identity, memory, humanity, and destiny. Annihilation is a mind-bending sci-fi thriller that explores the horrors and wonders of nature and human nature. Based on the first novel in the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, Annihilation was written and directed by Alex Garland, who previously helmed the acclaimed Ex Machina. The film stars Natalie Portman as Lena, a former soldier and current biologist who joins a covert mission into a mysterious zone called Area X. Area X is a quarantined region where an alien meteorite has created a shimmering dome that alters the environment and life forms within it. Lena's husband Kane was part of a previous expedition to Area X, but he returned a shell of his former self and fell into a coma. Lena hopes to find answers and a cure for him by venturing into the unknown with four other women. What they discover inside Area X is both beautiful and terrifying, as they encounter mutated creatures, surreal landscapes, and disturbing secrets. Annihilation is a visually stunning and intellectually stimulating film that challenges viewers to question their own perceptions of reality. The film's sound design and score, composed by Ben Salisbury, and Jeff Barrow are equally immersive and atmospheric, enhancing the mood and tension of the film. The film's cast delivers powerful performances, especially Portman, who portrays Lena's complex emotions and motivations with nuance and intensity. Despite positive reviews, Annihilation was a box office flop, grossing only $43 million worldwide against a budget of $55 million. The studio behind the film lost confidence in the film after test screenings showed that audiences found it too confusing and intellectual. They decided to sell the international 
international distribution rights to Netflix, which meant that the film was released theatrically only in North America and China. This decision robbed many viewers of the chance to experience the film on the big screen, where its visual effects and sound design would have been more impactful. Covenant is a sci-fi horror film that continues the Ridley Scott saga. It is both a sequel to 2012's Prometheus and a prequel to Alien, bridging the gap between the origins of the Xenomorphs and their encounter with the crew of the Nostromo. The movie follows the crew of the Covenant, a colony ship on its way to a new planet where they hope to establish a new home for humanity. However, a freak accident forces them to divert their course to a nearby planet that seems more hospitable and promising. There they discover the wreckage of the Prometheus and its sole survivor, the android who has been experimenting with the alien life forms for over a decade. David lures the unsuspecting crew into a trap, unleashing his creations upon them and revealing his sinister plan to wipe out humanity and create a new species. The film's action sequences are intense and visceral, featuring some of the most gruesome and inventive kills in the series. The film's visual effects are stunning and realistic creating a vivid and immersive world that is both familiar and alien. Despite positive reviews and a loyal fan base, Alien Covenant was a box office disappointment, grossing only $240 million worldwide against a budget of $111 million. The film's failure can be attributed to several factors, including a lack of marketing, its dark and violent tone, its complex and controversial plot, and its crowded release date. Prometheus had a similarly mixed reception five years earlier, but still managed to gross $400 million worldwide. Theories as to why Covenant failed to live up to its predecessor range from franchise fatigue to gruesome content. And despite its occasionally flimsy script, it shows Ridley Scott at his best, combining the body horror of the original Alien with the philosophizing about what it means to be human that he explored in Blade Runner. These qualities are matched by awe-inspiring visuals of a pristine planet, a decaying spaceship, and even more realistic aliens, making Covenant a standout addition to the series. Ad Astra is a sci-fi drama that follows the personal and cosmic journey of Roy McBride, an astronaut who embarks on a mission to find his missing father and save the world. Directed by James Gray and co-written by Gray and Ethan Gross, Ad Astra is a visually stunning and emotionally resonant film that explores themes of isolation, identity, and humanity. The film is set in the near future, where humanity has expanded its presence in the solar system, but also faces a mysterious threat from power surges emanating from Neptune. Roy McBride is a quiet and stoic space veteran who works for the U.S. Space Command. He is informed that his father, a legendary astronaut who led the Lima Project, a mission to search for intelligent life beyond Neptune, may still be alive and responsible for the surges. Roy agrees to travel to Mars to try to contact his father. Along the way, he faces many dangers and challenges, both physical and psychological, as he uncovers the truth about his father and himself. Ad Astra is a critically acclaimed film that received praise for its cinematography, production design, score, and performances. The film was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Sound mixing. However, the film was also a box office disappointment, grossing only $135 million worldwide against a budget of almost $100 million. The film's failure can be attributed to several factors, including a slow and introspective plot, an ambiguous ending, and competition from other films. Ad Astra had limited appeal to mainstream audiences who were expecting a more action-packed and straightforward sci-fi adventure. And still, it is a visionary and philosophical sci-fi masterpiece that examines the inner and outer space of a man's soul. Under the Skin is a sci-fi horror film that offers a unique and disturbing perspective on humanity and its environment. Based on the novel by Michelle Faber, Under the Skin stars Scarlett Johansson as an alien who takes the form of a seductive woman and roams the streets of Scotland, luring unsuspecting men into her van. She takes them to a dark and empty house, where she leads them into a black pool that consumes them. But as she continues her predatory routine, she begins to develop a curiosity and empathy for the people she encounters, and begins to question her own identity and purpose. Under the Skin is a visually excellent and daring film that defies easy categorization and explanation. The film's narrative is minimal and ambiguous, relying more on images, sounds, and atmosphere to create a sense of dread and wonder. The film's cinematography is striking and contrasting, capturing both the natural beauty and urban decay of Scotland. Despite critical acclaim, Under the Skin was a box office failure, grossing only $7.3 million worldwide against a budget of $13.3 million. The film's failure can be attributed to unconventional style and structure, its challenging and disturbing content, and its limited release. 
Predestination is a sci-fi thriller based on the short story All You Zombies by Robert A. Heinlein, which twists and turns through time and paradoxes. The film stars Ethan Hawke as a temporal agent who works for a secret organization that prevents crime by traveling back in time. His latest mission is to stop the elusive terrorist who has killed thousands of people with his bombs. To do so, he must track down the bomber's origin and identity, which leads him to a mysterious stranger in a bar who writes confessions. The stranger tells him his life story, which is full of temporal paradox involving different versions of the same person. It would take a long time to explain all the nuances of this story, but suffice it to say that it is about a man who is both a mother and a father to himself. Now live with it. Predestination is a mind-bending movie that plays with the concepts of fate, free will, and identity. The movie's plot is full of surprises and revelations as it gradually unravels the connections between the characters and their roles in the time loop. Despite positive reviews, Predestination was a box office failure, grossing only $5.4 million worldwide against a budget of $5 million. The film's failure can be attributed to several factors, including its unconventional style and structure, its challenging and confusing plot, and its limited release. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and click the buttons below the player. And see you in the next issue. Bye.